we are back. It has been 11 months wow. since we have been blessed with the presence of Robert McIntosh. Can you add him like sprinkles and stuff? Like make him glow like he's an angel of some sort? <laughs> <laughs> some of you may remember Robert from when he flew the tiny little drone around the beach, flew through some tight spaces. We did end up trying to build it out and it was very complicated. You were flying these things before it was streamlined at all. Yeah, I was just kind of just slapping it on there and trying to get it in the air. Oh, did you? I don't know if you saw how little clearance that actually is. He makes it look so easy. But over the last year, a lot of things have changed and a lot of things have kind of evolved, right? A lot more people are interested in it and including companies are now making drones with this kind of uh, stripped down GoPro flying in mind. So that is awesome. That means we might be able to do that similar type of build that we were doing back then, but we may be able to do it now without even soldering. Oh, Amazing, right? yeah, that sounds awesome. So we're gonna be going over how to build it, what parts you need to buy, how to set everything up. We did it, we didn't crash. <laughs> that was sweet. Time to go build our own. All right, let's start with the basics of what you need. Every FPV drone has three main components, right? You have your controller or transmitter, mm -hmm. and then you have the drone itself, and then you have your goggles or monitor. I think the transmitter is probably the first thing you're gonna wanna get because with the transmitter itself, you can at least start practicing with a simulator. I went with DJI because Robert told me to. The reason I said that is because it works with the DJI goggles, which are pretty awesome, because finally we can see in HD. Back in the day, you'd show people your GoPro Hero 1 footage and they'd be like, oh, that's really cool, that's awesome, that must be so much fun. And you're like, no, it's not that much fun. It looks like you're looking through like a VHS tape that's been recorded over 16 times and it's like terrible analog <laughs> signal, you know? So the big shift here is that this is a digital system opposed to analog. What I hear is good about analog is that there's zero latency. Yeah. But you end up dealing with a very fuzzy image. Yeah, and the, and the breakup happens in different ways. Like in digital, it'll get start to get blocky, you know, and then you might start to get like higher latency. And then analog, it starts to get fuzzier and it can just like black out all of a sudden. And there's trade-offs, you know? Right, but overall, you really like the digital system. I like the digital system, yeah, because like stuff that I would fly behind with analog, like if you're gonna fly behind a bunch of trees or something, you're definitely gonna get some sort of static or breakup. But with this, like a lot of times you don't even notice anything. If there is some latency or something, like I don't notice it. One thing I really like about how DJI sets up their products is that it's very intuitive. So I got the transmitter for 300 bucks and these goggles for about 530 bucks. I'm sure you can go cheaper, but what I like about it is that this isn't something that's gonna crash and burn, right? Exactly, yeah. It's premium, but you don't have to worry about, you know, wrecking them. So to get good image quality, we're gonna use this GoPro. The Hero 6 Black works really well with what Beta FPV is essentially designed. So it's more of a plug and play instead of trying to rewire a whole bunch of stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. That is very nice. But also the biggest benefits to you know the Hero 7, the Hero 8 is the improved stabilization. But to get the best image stabilization, we're actually gonna be shooting with the stabilization turned off so that the camera itself is recording all the gyro data so as the drone is moving around that information is logged onto the camera itself and then Robert's company Realsteady has a software out there which will analyze that gyro data and really stabilize the footage and I want to say that's what a majority of FPV drone pilots are using right yeah it's really starting to catch on which is it's cool to see if you guys want to see some of the stuff that's been stabilized with Realsteady definitely recommend checking out their Instagram some of that footage on there wild do you manage that account? Uh, I do, but I've been doing less of it since you know, we became part of GoPro. But since you've become a part of GoPro, which yeah, we got bought by GoPro at the beginning of the year, I think. Wait, what? Are you rich now? No, I wish. <laughs> that's really? awesome. Well, congratulations. That's yeah, that's, that's awesome. very cool. We we joined the mothership. I like how nonchalant he just said it. You're so casual I about you that. Knew that. No. I want to see Robert really excited. This is this is probably I'm as excited as you get. Yeah, this might be it. So here's a list of like the main first seven things that you need. 
to really get this thing going. I wanna say roughly I spent about $1,500 to get this complete package together, which could be a little bit steep, but again, a majority of this stuff is going to be reusable. It's not like a drone that gets crashed and then all of a sudden you have to completely restart. Well, before anything, we have to figure out the battery situation because the transmitter comes with its own battery and that's simple. You just plug it in through USB and charges. The goggles uh, don't have a built-in battery. Yeah, the, the goggles are, are set up to use just any kind of drone battery or common drone batteries that most people have who like fly racing drones or something. So we're dealing with lithium polymer batteries, which lipos they call them. These batteries definitely intimidate me a little bit because I hear if you do the wrong thing that they will explode in your face. Yeah, there's a couple of things to watch out for, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's not that bad. I have seen these charging bags where you're you can put your things into, and even if it catches on fire, it's safe. I don't exactly do that. I just you know, make sure that I'm around while I'm charging them. I actually charge my batteries on the stove just because I'm paranoid. Like I've never had a problem in like 10 years of charging batteries, but they say, you know, be careful of these things. And I've had a couple batteries get a little bit puffy. And when they get a little bit puffy, I just retire them. You just have to remember not to turn on the stove while you have it on. You don't, you don't have to do it on a stove. All you gotta do is just make sure that you're around. So these are two different sized batteries and they both have two connectors. This guy is gonna be for your smaller drone. And the common connector for the smaller drone is an XT30, which is this little guy right here. And this one is like your basic racing drone battery that's gonna have like, you know, bigger five inch propellers. And this is an XT60, so we got XT60, XT30. They look very similar, but just bigger on the XT60. Yeah, they're basically the same battery. This one's just bigger, and this one's got a bigger pipe to deliver all the power through, you know? And then this other dangling thing. This is your balance connector, so it kind of just relays information to your charger about what all the cells are doing and, you know, helps the charger not do anything dumb to the battery to make it puff up, you know? Okay, so it's more of like a safety mechanism. Yeah, it's kind of just like the communication, right? This is the power and this is the communication. This is a charger that I got a little while ago, uh, but they're all pretty much the same. Huh? Yeah, they're all they're all kind of the same. You just want to have one that charges both an XD60 and XD30. Yeah, and they will. All you got to do is make sure that the plug that you're plugging it into is, you know, you can swap these out. Like you can buy a, an XT30 one like this with the two bullet connectors or an XT60 one. Just want to make sure that we're on lithium battery because these are lithium polymer batteries. Make sure that, you know, the red wire is plugged into the red one, the black one's plugged into the black one. Same with this, they usually make it so you can't plug it in the wrong way. And then you find the um, balance plug that has, you know, fits the right size. So this is 4S, so we're, there's four cells in this battery. So we find the 4S one right there, or just the one that has, you know, one that looks like it fits. You know? <laughs> so then we're on um, lithium battery, and I think we go to the next one. And then it wants you to choose how many amps you're gonna charge it at. And the thing to remember is, however many milliamps your battery is, so this one's a 1500, this one's a 520, you can just do double that for amps. So we could charge this at like 1.1 amp, right? Because that's basically twice what this is, right? This is a four cell, four cells, one, two, three, four. So this says three cells. We want to change that to four cells. Gonna select lipo charge first, I guess. Okay, so and we selected 1.1 amps and we'll go to the next one and we'll go up to four cells. If we had put this on three cell, and tried to charge it, it would just yell at us, don't worry, you're not gonna burn on your house. It's gonna say, nope, I'm not gonna do that. By changing the voltage, the 14.8 volts, it basically changed it to four cell. Yeah, exactly. We hold it probably to start. There we go. So battery. it's checking the battery and says, yep, you didn't lie to me. It really is a four cell. Do you wanna start? And you say, yeah, let's start. So how do you know that this is a four cell? It'll say the voltage on there. So 4S, 15.2 volts. And then you can also count these if you want. So there's a ground. And then there's four more wires for each one of the cells. That's one way to do it. Or you could look to see how many cells there are. I'm assuming also when you're buying it. It I'm should be in the description. Yeah. So if I were to charge this larger battery, I would basically put it at three amps because it's 1500 milliamps. Yeah, that's right. And then I just set the voltage to be at four cell and awesome. So how do people mess this up usually? Um, well, you could plug these into the wrong one, which is not good. You know, you don't want to reverse the polarity, right? Because then you're going to like short something. So you've never had a battery explode on you or anything like that? No, nope. I've had, I've had batteries, you know, puff up from like flying them too hard, you know, because when you're like real aggressive and you're going to like 
full throttle and stuff like that, you might come down and your battery might be a little bit puffy. Or if you crash, like they can explode if they get punctured, you know? Right. But okay. They don't, they don't like explode. It kind of just sounds like a soda can, like letting the fizz out and then, and then it'll catch on fire. <laughs> that's not, not too fun. It's not gonna go boom and then explode. Okay, so why are there six cells, one cell, two cells? What's the situation with that? It's kind of just, you just want more juice. You want more power right away, right? So, the milliamps will be like how big the gas tank is, and then the voltage would be like how fast you want to drain that gas tank, right? So mm. you want to just like deliver more power to the motors because you got heavier payload or. You like to go really fast, you know? So this beta FPV drone uses the XG30 connector. So that's why we have these little batteries, but we also have one of these bigger batteries with the XT60 for the goggles. Right. So now that we have power sorted out, we have to first activate both of these DJI products. We actually gotta activate three components. We gotta activate this, this guy too. DJI Assistant to the DJI FPV series. So here I'm just gonna fly through this, say yes to everything, sell my soul, no problem. Now you did this whole process on the PC. I did, yeah. Okay, cool. And we're gonna do it now on a Mac, so pretty much the same process. So when I activated the controller, there's just a USB-C cable down here. So all I did was I plugged that into the computer, it activated it, and also updated the firmware on this transmitter. So this transmitter is already good to go. Okay. So let's try doing the goggles. Hey. So I think we need to power on the goggles first. So I'll just plug in power, and that's what powers it on. There's no power switch. And then I think we plug in the USB-C. Just click on DJI goggles. Start activation. Activating, woo! Okay, new firmware update is strongly recommended. Let's go ahead and do that. So far, so good. And then we gotta update the CAD-X Vista unit. CAD-X is the company that makes the little camera and this thing. DJI like licensed the technology to them so they can make like this DJI product. So usually when you're using this setup, you would be using the DJI Air unit, right? But that's it, bigger? It's bigger, yeah. So it's, most people use this now because it's smaller and with drones, smaller is better usually. Now, when I was buying this, there was a couple of different options in terms of the transmitter, and you had me choose the PNP. Yeah, well, I think that means plug and play, and that just means that you use it with the DJI controller, which just makes the whole thing more convenient. You know, you can just take it out of the box, and they all work together, and you don't have to worry about some other kind of like radio protocol. So the goggles and controller updating it as straightforward as it gets now for the drone itself, there's a little USB port right there, and they supply a little L bracket for the USB-C. And this is just so that you can get in tight right there. And the propellers are in the way, so that's just so that we can kind of angle it right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and power up the drone itself. Now that's booted up, now we're gonna go ahead and connect it to the computer. So now everything is up to date and activated. Now we gotta bind all these things together so they can all talk to each other. So step one is to bind the drone with the goggles. Okay, so to put it into bind mode, there's this tiny little button on the goggles. There we go, now okay. it's beeping. Nice, so And now. then we wanna put our drone into bind mode. And there's another tiny little button on the drone right there. You can barely see it. It's like this little black button to the right of the little green light. And now it's bound, I think. Okay, awesome. So we can check that real fast by looking in the goggles. What? We can already see? <gasps> Whoa! Hey, the quality is actually pretty dang good. I know, right? It's like HD, man. I'm actually surprised. This is my first time actually looking through it, but the quality on this thing's good. You wanna look, Sam? Oh, this is way better than the other one. <laughs> so this is why you pay the big bucks for these goggles. Exactly. So goggles is paired. Now we have to pair the transmitter. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn on the controller with a tap and hold, just like most DJI drone stuff. Okay, and then I'm gonna plug in the drone. Okay. And now I think we need to hold the record button, the big button to the right, and then push in this right dial. And okay. I think it should put it in bind mode. Okay, then we'll push our tiny little button next to the green light on this thing. So if I wanted to, I could just like take this thing off real quick? Uh, yeah, we, we could do a little test top. <gasps> oh, first flight, here we go. So we gotta find a way to put the battery so it, that it's not like way back there or way up here. So what I did was I pulled this Velcro out and instead of having it going this way, I have it go this way. Aha. Uh -huh. So I run it through there. There we go. Now we can mount our battery sideways 
and it should be a little bit more balanced. I'm assuming you have to be pretty careful about these little loose cables. You have to just make sure that none of them get stuck in the propellers. Yeah, that's actually a good idea to do what you just did there. Let's see what the goggles are saying. Plug in our radio. Ooh. Ho, ho, ho. Our it first works. flight. It works. That is cool. That thing is a lot louder than the one that I have. I know, it's pretty loud. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's something about these little propellers in the in the little guards that make it super loud. So now it is time to prepare this GoPro to fit on this little drone. And the settings you're gonna want is what, 4K 30? I, I prefer 4K 4x3 30, or if you want higher frame rates or you wanna do slow motion, 2.7K 4x3 60. Got it. And remember to turn off stabilization. We don't want the GoPro doing any of the stabilization. We're gonna right, leave yeah, that yeah. to real steady. You got it. You want stabilization turned off, ProTune turned on, you know, because you want those extra bit rate and all that good stuff. Yeah. And now we hack it apart and take out the internals of it, right? You got it. But we already did that step when we recorded this whole breakdown the first time. So let's cut to the past. Now you recommend doing this with the GoPro Hero 6, right? GoPro Hero 6, yeah. As of filming right now, it goes up to the 8, but 6 is... You said a good range because it's kind of like one of the older, less expensive ones, but it gives you the gyro data that you need to stabilize. Exactly. It gives us the best gyro data if you want to use real study for your stabilization, uh -huh. which is, you know, going to give you the best look. So before we start taking apart the GoPro, one thing you're going to want to do is downgrade your firmware if you have a firmware over 1.6. So I had 2.1, so we went on, was it Softpedia? Softpedia.com. We just looked up GoPro 6 firmware 1.6. It was a free download. We loaded those files onto a micro SD card, put it on here. All right, so we got that. Let's start taking it apart. So for this part, we need a butter knife and a screwdriver. The main part of the glue is the square that goes all the way around here. And we basically just have to like break that bond right there. Should we uh, take off the... This oh yeah, come off that's, first? A good, that's a good idea. We should take this off first. Case. Might need a pliers for this. Oh no, there we go. All so right, you so can just twist that off. Gotta make sure there's no battery in there. So we're good there. We can take this off. Let's see if we can get underneath here. There we go, it's already starting to go. Ooh, see, this is, the hey. easy, this is the easy part here. So what I like to do is start with the butter knife and then see if I can get the screwdriver in there. Ooh, there you can hear it going. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good sound. Oh, this is coming off easy. Oh yeah? I this think is, we got lucky. Good? The reason why Real Steady works better than HyperSmooth 2.0, HyperSmooth is actually stabilizing it on the fly in camera, which is nice and convenient. The benefit of Real Steady is that you actually load it onto the computer after you've shot it. <gasps> Did it is it off? That's the easiest one I've ever done. Woo! And I've done like 10 of these. Wow. But yeah, with Real Steady Go, you put in your full clips. It knows not only what the camera's currently doing, but what it's gonna be doing in like five seconds from now. Exactly, and all that, yeah. right? So you could get like analyze all that and then stabilize it. Yeah, so just like the video file is gonna have a video track and an audio track, there's also a gyro track that just tells you the whole story of how the camera moved like rotationally. So we can plan out like the perfect way to stabilize all your movements. So now we need a little yeah. Torx head. And I saw you had a fancy kit over there that should have a lot of these small attachments to it. Okay, most tool sets, if you take it, you shake it up, you open it, it's just like all over the place. Yeah, like mine. It's terrible. Like how come they're not all designed like smarter? <laughs> Wah. Oh, come on. You guys see that? Yeah, I want one. Yeah. Wee. <laughs> Probably like a T5 or something. Maybe it's gonna be need to be pretty small if you don't yeah. have it. It I think seems I like it. it. Oh, yeah, you got I think it. Okay. T five. So now we got that. What are we doing now? So we're just gonna look to start prying. So the thing that's making it stick, so you can see it kind of coming out. Yeah. The thing that's sticking are these USB ports that we got to kind of clear. Uh, shimmy something in there, maybe. You don't want to just yank the whole thing out right away. You just kind of want to get it clear so you can see where all the uh, cables and stuff are. Okay. In there. Now we can pull this end with the USB part out first and just kind of see what our cables are doing here. And there's a bunch of um, ribbon cables coming to this kind of strip here. Okay. And those can you can just all unplug. They just pop right in there. They just snap in there. And now we gotta remember how to get our battery thing off. Pretty sure we just pull this off. We can also start unplugging more of these ribbon cables. There's this one down here, which goes to the LCD in the front, your front LCD. So we can just pull that off. You can dig a fingernail underneath that and just 
pops right off again. Do this at your own risk, by the way. I feel like we should say that. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if you mess up your, your GoPro. Risk. Yeah, if you mess up your GoPro, it's not my fault. It's Robert's it's, fault. It's not my fault either. <laughs> if you have like some painter's tape or masking tape, uh -huh. you might want to put it over the lens ah. just in case you're like digging stuff out yeah. and you might, don't want to scratch the lens. Good idea. Okay, so we're taking more screws out. Basically, if you see a screw anywhere, you can take it out. So then we got another ribbon cable. So you can pull out this ribbon cable from here and there's no like latch you got to flip up or anything. You can just pull that one out. So then I'm unplugging the USB port. Now this USB thing comes off and now we can unplug the sensor and lens part. There's this um, kind of adhesive ribbon thing that we haven't taken off yet and that's the only thing that's keeping the motherboard on. So we'll try and uh, just peel that back. So that's the only thing left that's holding the motherboard on. Then we can take the motherboard off, I hope. There we go. So there's our motherboard. So now we've got to remove our lens from this big old heat sink thing with the LCD, which we don't really need. So there's one more screw left, which is right down there. There we go. So now we should be able to just pull the lens out. There we go. Okay, so this is what we're left with, with the GoPro. Yeah, it's just the motherboard and the lens and sensor assembly. Beta FPV supplies this part, which is really handy, which is the record and the power buttons. Oh. So these little um, button connectors, mm -hmm. this one lines up there and this one lines up right there. Snaps into it place, It should huh? snap into place. Man, this thing is great because that little piece makes it so that you have access to the buttons, you can power the camera, all just with one little snap in place. Yeah. This was pretty difficult in the last version. It was, oh. yeah. Thanks, Beta FPV, for making this board. This <laughs> is super helpful. It'll completely change how frustrating this is to set up. It's, it's worth just... every penny. <laughs> they include this injection molded case, which is perfectly fits this stripped down GoPro, which is also super convenient. It's pretty easy. I think it just pops in there. You don't even really have to put all the screws in there. Well, I know before you used to actually take the old LCD and plug it in there to change settings and whatnot. Yeah, it's kind of iffy. Like sometimes it'll connect to your phone and sometimes it'll be like tough connection because like the antenna that's in the regular GoPro case, it's like this little just piece of gold foil that's in there. Uh -huh. It doesn't have that now. So like it's kind of finicky connection or you can connect the screen through there if you need to. Oh, okay, so if you still kept the screen itself, you could actually, it ha gives you access to it. So you yeah. can plug in. Oh, awesome, okay. I mean, we have our before and after. The weight difference is kind of crazy, huh? Betaflight includes this little yellow wire here because I guess they're intending for you to be able to control the recording of the GoPro through your radio, but I haven't figured out how to get that to work. So what I just do is pull out the yellow wire. I use like a razor blade just to like pull that back and pull this out. So here, this is the unofficial tutorial because I'm pretty sure Beta FPV would suggest leaving that in, but we're just gonna make life a little easier for us and pull out the yellow wire. So you just bend like this little tooth back on there that holds this thing in there uh -huh. and just comes right out. Oh, awesome. So if you ever wanted to put it back in, you kind of could. Oh, you just slide it right back in. So now we can plug it back in, power it up and see if that red light comes on. Okay, sweet. So now we got to mount the thing. So they give you this nifty little GoPro sleeve that this slides right into, but we got to screw it onto this little dampening part. Now we just need a couple more of those screws from that little bag and we can screw this in. While you're screwing this thing in, you want to like undo this, uh, what is this thing called? Nylon screw. Uh -huh. And we'll, we'll pop it back in later. So working in some tight spaces right there, but you're basically just feeding some screws in through the frame to mount this GoPro holder. Okay, that's tight enough. There we go. So now we can pop the GoPro in there. So this just slides in like this? Yeah. Plug in our power and I think we're ready to fly. So here it is in its completed form and to really get a sense of how small this is, I put it next to the Mavic 2 Pro, a drone that I used to consider to be a fairly small drone. But this is actually smaller than just one of its propellers. And then there's the Mavic Mini, which is ridiculously small, right? But once you extend out the propellers and you see how much wingspan it really needs, this is actually about half the width of the Mavic Mini. So this can get through some tight, tight spaces as long as you're a good pilot, which I'm not yet. I'm working on it. Plug in my goggles into this battery right here. This is the bigger battery, the XT60, and that's gonna give me a feed 
I'm gonna go ahead, get my controller, which has that built-in battery. I'm gonna tap and hold. Now I got my smaller XT30 battery in here and I'm gonna go ahead and connect it. And if everything's plugged in correctly, you're gonna see a little flash come out of the back of the GoPro. And then once you do that, I have mine set. So I press the power button and it turns on, gives you a few more blinks. And then if I tap the record button and it will start blinking. See that right there? So now it is recording. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go for a little flight. I'm no Robert McIntosh, but uh, let's see what we can get here. Now you'll probably notice that this footage is pretty shaky, but I'm gonna go ahead and stabilize it with real steady, just so that you guys don't get too motion sick. And let's see if I can go through this. Oh, went on the seat. Let's say hi to Carrie. Hello, we got PETA in the house. How much you wanna bet that Robert would totally go through these right here? Uh, I'm not at that level, so I'm gonna skip that and avoid having to fish my drone out of the pool. And let's go visit our neighbors, shall we? Look at that Super 73. We got Justin and Sam, what's he working on? Rendering something. Let's see us. Yeah, there's us right there. All right. Oh, hey there, buddy. I think she wants to eat this drone. All right, let me just come over the house, take a shortcut back to here. There's my truck. And here we are. I'm gonna go ahead and disarm the drone right there now. Before you actually do your first fly, I would check a few things here. I'm sure there's gotta be a better way to screen cap this screen, but uh, I don't know, we'll <laughs> make it work. We're gonna first wanna go pull up that menu right there, and then we're gonna go into our settings and then go into display right there. And then that will take us to custom OSD. You're just gonna wanna make sure that that is turned on. That way you can kind of see through your goggles what your drone is doing. That is step one. I'm gonna go ahead and power on the drone so we should get a feed in a couple seconds here. Ah, there we are. Now when you first turn it on, it should say disarmed right there. That means the drone's not really going anywhere until you're ready to fly. And then we come here to the bottom right and you see how it says stab. That means we're in stability mode. Now I can switch it to acro. So, you know, that's the more advanced form of flying. And then when you're ready to take off, you're gonna go ahead and flip that disarm switch right there, which is gonna activate it. And now if I hit the throttle, it's gonna start flying. As for the controller with this current firmware on the drone, this is what controls the stability and acros. And up here is the disarm. So I have it towards me to disarm. And then when I'm ready to fly, I would push it away from me and that would arm the drone. Once that happens, you make sure that this is all the way down and then you take off. All right, now our final step is to download that footage off of the GoPro's memory card and it looks awesome. It's just really shaky. So we're gonna wanna go ahead and run it through Real Steady Go. And the software itself is pretty much as simple as it gets. You're gonna go ahead, click load video right there, find your shots. You're gonna go ahead and look for whatever shot you want to upload. It's automatically gonna run everything for you and it's also gonna synchronize the gyro data. So you know how there's a video track and there's an audio track. There's also a gyro track, but sometimes that can shift a little bit. So it's just making sure that everything is perfectly aligned. And now we have a solid preview of the stabilization. And from here, we can just go ahead and hit save if we want to, but we could also come down here on the bottom right. And sometimes if it's too much stabilization or you need more, you can go ahead and slide this around. But right now I'm just gonna leave it as is and I'm gonna go ahead and hit render and that's it. Now you wait. Now it does take a minute for it to process, but the result out of real steady, I'm not kidding, it's some of the best stabilization I've ever seen. You look at how rough some of this FPV footage is and you compare it to stabilized footage, it, it's crazy. One last thing, if you're really interested in getting into FPV but all this seems overwhelming like it was for me, this, I cannot recommend it enough. The beauty of this is that for 129 bucks you get goggles, you get a little controller, and you have a little starter drone. Now it's not the best, but it gets you into the FPV world. This thing has been awesome. You don't have to be as worried about crashing it. I got so much practice on this little drone. So now that I have the bigger, better drone, I was able to go ahead and just dive right in and be fairly comfortable right away. So you're very familiar with like a traditional drone, but you've yeah. never flown an FPV drone? No. Oh, oh. The thing I would say is just like be as gentle as possible. With just imagine it's super sensitive. Oh, it's super sensitive. Super oh sensitive, right? God. The beauty of this is that you can at least fly it and you don't have to worry about crashing it. I flew this thing into walls like a full speed. <laughs> 
<laughs> Start going towards the pool. Yeah, I was like, no. Yeah, you just have to have your finger ready on that trigger on right this? there. Yeah. Okay. You can use the goggles if you want, but it's it's a lot easier to get started by just looking at it. Because when you're in the goggles, it's so much harder to get a, a sense of perspective. perspective of where yeah. You're you could just watch it until you're comfortable at least hovering this thing around. First few times when I put on the goggles, I'm like, how do people fly with these goggles? But then you get really used to it. It kind of just goes. Yeah. It doesn't like go and stop. Exactly. And it's not smart at all. Yeah. Crazy. And I'm not smart either. So, <laughs> so you're going to get one? I think so. Dude. Link in description. Yes. <laughs> you're not going to get great quality. You're not going to get good range to fight. It's unstable, but it's really good practice. And another nice thing about this is it's just like the other Cinewoop we built where, you know, once you have the goggles and the controllers, it's not like you have to replace them if you wreck the drone or lose it. You can just buy another one of these. I think if you replace the drone itself, I think it's 50 bucks. But yeah, I think that's just about it. I think this video is getting ridiculously long. So I think we're going to end this one here. See you guys later. Thank you.